back to the comments section. I'm Brett Cooper. So yesterday I was with my friends Good Ranchers and Team Penske at the Music City Grand Prix, which happened over the weekend here in Nashville. So I was fully focused on IndyCar. But when I got home last night, I realized that something crazy had happened in the NASCAR world and I had totally missed it all weekend long. So we're going to talk about that today because once again, NASCAR is being a bunch of progressive social justice warrior cucks and we got to dive into it. Before we do though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. Alrighty, so this is the first headline I saw. I saw it last night. NASCAR's Noah Gragson suspended after reportedly liking George Floyd meme. That escalated quickly. I mean, guys, we are literally living in 1984 with the Thought Police. They are watching your every move tracking you on social media, hoping to find ways to cancel you. Somebody said NASCAR is the Bud Light of auto racing. Another person said, I'd stop watching NASCAR, but I already don't. Same, it's pretty easy to boycott. Somebody else said, when did NASCAR go from freedom to snowflake? They can't drive in circles if they have that much snow everywhere. Mic drop. I mean, honestly, they went downhill a while ago, which makes the story very, very plausible and sadly not surprising at all. For example, NASCAR posted this video right after the George Floyd riots started. So it makes sense that they would suspend somebody for liking me. But anyway, look at this video. It is so cringe. These are all their drivers, by the way. We're no strangers to moving fast. And we know how life can have that same quality. But now? But now? But now is the time to slow down and reflect. The events of recent weeks highlighted the work we still need to do as a nation to condemn racial inequality and racism. The deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and countless others in the black community are heartbreaking. Are heartbreaking. Are heartbreaking and can no longer be ignored. The process begins with us listening and learning because understanding the problem is the first step in fixing it. These we are men. committed to listening with empathy and with an open heart to better educate ourselves. We will use this education to advocate for change in our nation, our communities, and most importantly, in our own homes, even after the headlines go away. All of our voices. Okay, that guy right back there glazed over the eyes. It's like somebody is going, reaching through the screen, grabbing his neck. You better say your anti-racist script. No matter how big or how small, it is all of our responsibility to no longer be silent. To no longer be silent. We just can't stay silent. We have a long road ahead of us. But let's commit to make that journey together. 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 Our differences should not divide the dramatic us. dramatic piano it music. It is our love for all mankind that will unite us as we work together to make real change. To make real change. As we work together to make real change. Wow, thank you, NASCAR. You really solved racism with that one. We can all move on. Thank you so much. My entire body, I just like, because it brought me back to 2020 when this was every single day. Every brand, every organization. Help, my sorority. I remember being at UCLA, still being in my sorority group chat, and it was a whole fiasco trying to figure out what our statement was gonna be. Like, you're, it's the Kappa Delta chapter at UCLA. Nobody cares. It's cringe. It did nothing. And now, knowing everything that we know about BLM and how fraudulent that entire organization was, just makes it even more laughable. But that's not the point of this episode. We can move on. I just wanted you all to see that NASCAR has been doing this for a while. Now, side note, it's kind of perfect timing, sadly, that this happened over the weekend because Elon also tweeted this on Saturday and he said, if you were unfairly treated by your employer due to posting or liking something on this platform, we will fund your legal bill. No limit. Please let us know. And it will be absolutely wild if he follows through with that, because I know a lot of people have been canceled for posting, for liking. Sadly, though, the meme that Noah liked was on Instagram, not Twitter, so I don't think he'll qualify, but still, this felt like a good time to show you guys this, because I think it's very cool. Anyway, because I am sure everybody is interested, everybody wants to know how atrocious and awful this meme is that Noah liked, I'm just going to leave it right here for you all. This is it. This is the culprit. All right, now, the person who broke this earth-shattering story is basically the Taylor Lorenz of the NASCAR writing world. And if you didn't know, Taylor Lorenz is a WAPO writer, and she whines and cries on camera, and she doxes people that she disagrees with, so all in all, not a great person. Here is the tweet featuring this incredible display of investigative journalism. This is from Daniel McFadden. Noah Gragson made a big mistake. I did my due diligence to make sure it was real. My front stretch column on Gragson's deserved suspension. Dropping the hammer, Noah Gragston's big mistake. So basically, he was scrolling on Instagram. He saw this meme. He liked it, as people do when they're scrolling on Instagram. Somebody else scrolled on the meme, saw his username saying Noah Gradston. They screenshotted it. They posted it on Twitter. Here it is. I wish I could say I'm surprised, but I'm not. 
Like, I'm sorry, it's his name with 77,000 other people who liked the stupid meme. Anyway, then this guy, Daniel from Front Stretch, the author, found out and he wrote this article putting him on blast and just listened to some of these lines from this groundbreaking piece. <clears throat> At some unknown point between May 27th and August 4th, Gragston saw and watched the meme. Then he pressed the heart icon. A meme about a man who was murdered, like bro! This is so dramatic for absolutely no reason. The drama surrounding this is completely unnecessary. Like there are so many worse things happening online and in real life every single day. Like pipe down, I think you're a bit soft. I think maybe you don't spend enough time on social media. It's really not that groundbreaking of a story, please. He goes on and he says, <laughs> my instant emotional reaction was to believe that it was real, but I had to make sure because this is the internet that we're talking about. When I got the chance last night, I immediately sent an email to Legacy Motors Club PR representatives. In that email, I made every attempt possible to couch my message and the questions I included in a way that allowed for the possibility that the screenshot was a fabrication. This is hall monitor behavior. There is no other way to describe this. He literally got home. He wrote a letter to NASCAR and Noah's team to check and see if it was real. And the email, again, is just nauseating. He was like, and how does NASCAR feel about this? How, what are they going to do about it? Like you were not giving him the benefit of the doubt. You were trying to expose him. You were trying to cancel somebody for your own gain. Now, the next Next morning, very quickly, Legacy Motors announced that Noah would not be racing and they suspended him from the team. They posted it on social media, blasted it everywhere. And then less than an hour later, NASCAR followed suit and indefinitely suspended him from the organization. Here are their statements. This is from Legacy Motors. Quote, we have made the decision to suspend Noah Gragson effective immediately regarding his actions that do not represent the values of our team. Josh Berry will drive the number four entry for this weekend's NASCAR Cup Series race in Michigan. And then NASCAR jumped in and said, NASCAR fully supports Legacy Motor Club's decision to suspend Noah Gragson following his actions on social media. NASCAR has determined that Gragson violated the member conduct section of the 2023 NASCAR rulebook and has placed him under indefinite suspension. For liking a post, a single post, he has been suspended. He's not allowed to race. His career is literally blowing up in front of his face. Again, it's a stupid meme, but they are scaring him into silence. Like these macho car racing guys are scared of a whiny reporter named Daniel and a meme on Instagram. Now, when Daniel saw that Noah had been suspended, he wrote about it in his article and he said, good, NASCAR had to take this action. Like, okay, so five seconds ago, you were saying you wanted to not believe this. You were giving him the benefit of the doubt and now you were so pleased, insufferable. Nobody liked his article. Nobody likes him anymore. Somebody said people like you were really pathetic. His comment section was, Oh, like on fire. Somebody else said a big mistake for liking a meme. What is wrong with you? Somebody else said it's all fun and games until you're the one getting penalized for wrong speak. Also, this is an interesting comment. Somebody said, it sounds like they're looking for a reason to dump him and then highlighted parts of the New York Post article where it talked about Noah ranking at number 33 in points and then the fact that he finished in top 10 in just one race this year, I think. And so maybe this was convenient timing for NASCAR. I don't know. I looked him up and this guy has had some really strong races before. I don't think he's you know a terrible driver i don't think he would be on the legacy motors team if he was like a god-awful driver but i don't know maybe nascar saw this as an opportunity to knock him off bring some other driver in here and simultaneously please all of their raging liberal anti-racist fans that they apparently have i did not know that raging liberals loved car racing and loved nascar but apparently they do so i'm really glad that they are getting those brownie points. Now, last thing, here is the statement that Noah posted yesterday after all of this went down. And he said, I am disappointed in myself for my lack of attention and actions on social media. I understand the severity of the situation. Mm it's severe because it's your career. The meme, no. He went on and said, I love and appreciate everyone. I try to treat everyone equally, no matter who they are. I messed up plain and simple. I wanna know who wrote this for him, if it was him or if it was some PR person, because of course he is trying to, you know, remain balanced and get his career back on track, hopefully be unsuspended. But I appreciate the fact that he did not do the normal, like, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna take time away to re-educate myself and do the work and like fall on his knees for them. Like it's very telling that in that first line, he said, that he is disappointed in his lack of attention on social media. So translation, he's upset that he did not think about the consequences of hearting a stupid meme that he saw on his explore page, which we should not have to do. Like that is the real meat of this story. I don't think this guy is sorry and he shouldn't be because people like memes all the time. The troubling part is that people feel like they need to watch their back every single second of their life because somebody might be watching them trying to cancel them. That is absurd and it is crazy that that is the world that we live in.
I hope you enjoyed this episode of the comment section and that you maybe even learned something new. If you have not already, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and of course, ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section episode.